Alrighty, um, so good morning everyone. Happy Monday. Uh, thank you so much for spending a little bit of your Monday morning with us today. Uh, my name is Nairi and I am part of the team at Plan Tracker. If you're unfamiliar with Plan Tracker, we are a national NDIS registered plan manager and we have the privilege of supporting self-managed and plan managed NDIS participants and their families right across Australia. Now, before I go any further and before I introduce our very special guest, I would like to respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands across Australia. Today, I am on the beautiful Garingai land and I pay my respects to all elders past, present and emerging. Uh, today, I am super excited to be chatting with you about exercise physiology. Uh, we're gonna take a look at what exercise physiology actually is, uh, what it's of exercise physiology and how you can use your NDIS funding to access it. Now, to help us unpack all of that, I am super delighted to introduce Jason Korakic, Jason is the founder and director of Uplift Exercise Physiology. He is an accredited exercise physiologist and has over eight years experience in the field. So good morning, Jason. Happy Monday, my friend. And thank you so much for being with us today. Nairi, thank you very much for the lovely introduction. And I'd also like to start with an acknowledgement of country as well. Uplift Exercise Physiology would like to respect Fully acknowledge that we're on the traditional lands of the Awabakal people and we'd like to pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Thank you, Jason. Now, Jason and I would love you all to be involved from home. So if you have any questions or comments as we go, please pop them into the chat box. Righto. Uh, you ready, Jason? Let's get into the meaty stuff. Um, so, uh, Jason, I've had uh, gym memberships. Um, I've made many and um, failed New Year's Eve pledges to get fit. Uh, and I've broken a ton of uh, bones in this poor body of mine. So, um, I'm, I'm very familiar with going to the gym, uh, mm. using a personal trainer and going to a physiotherapist. So yeah. I'd love to start off, um, Jason, by asking you to take us through what is exercise physiology and how does it differ uh, from going to the gym uh, or going to a physiotherapist? Yeah, great, great question, Nairi. So I guess, um, I guess to explain that, uh, one of the quotes that I like to use is exercise is medicine. Uh, and further to that, there's, there's a quote, if exercise was, was a pill, if you could picture all the benefits that you could get from exercise, if it was a pill or a drug, it would just about be the most prescribed pill <clears throat> in the world because of all the benefits that you can get from exercise or, or if you prefer to call it movement, I know sometimes people, there's a bit of a stigma around exercise. It doesn't necessarily have to be a hard hitting gym session or, a, or you know, you're training for a marathon or anything like that. But it, uh, I think that's the key thing to mention is it's movement that is individualized to the person who we're working with. Um, and I guess to help explain what is exercise physiology a little bit further, is what some of the programs might look like. Uh, so typically the process that we go through is we receive a referral, whether it's from a support coordinator or whether it's directly from a participant in the NDIS, um, specifically today, uh, we receive the referral and, and typically we, will, we, can, we can either see them in their home for a community-based visit, we can see them at a local facility like a gym or a hydrotherapy centre, or they can come to our clinic in Newcastle. And when, we, when they come to our clinic, one of the first things we ask them is what their goals are, because obviously that's going to be the guiding light as to what, what we want to help them achieve out of their, their program. So we talk about their NDIS goals and we talk about their personal goals. We talk about their likes and their dislikes uh, in terms of exercise. And then we put our heads together and create an exercise plan that's appropriate for them um, based on their interest and based on their goals to help them get towards their goals. And as you can imagine, there's so many different ways that people, well, so many uh, exercise programs can look completely different for different people. So uh, some people might want to, and, and, and as long as we think it's beneficial for them too, some people might want to do a hydrotherapy program or some people might need to be visited or want to be visited in their home or some people might prefer um, kind of that privacy of the online consults or, 
or some people do want to get back into the gym and they just don't know where to start. So that's a little bit of an overview about ex- what, what exercise physiology is. I guess to summarize it, it is having a look at all of the scientific evidence out there around how exercise can help people with their health. And then the exercise physiologist is the person that helps to create that program and guide that person um, to be able to get to be able to realize those health benefits and ideally do it in a way where they can they can be confident to self-manage it. I know that's not possible all the time, but that's where we might rely on those informal or formal supports to to help out with that process, whether it be the support worker or family or friends. Um, and so that that allows uh, especially in the NDIS participants to to stay active and realize those health benefits of exercise. Mm, mm. Um, and it, it's wonderful to hear you reference that in terms of working towards the goals um, of the participants' plans and really utilising, you know, what they like and what they don't like. And I think mm. all of us, um, you know, we, we get so much better and um, are so much more motivated to exercise if, if it's doing something that we really um, enjoy. So, uh, you know, thanks for, for clarifying that for us, um, Jason. So in terms of um, the benefits of exercise physiology, could you perhaps talk um, to us um, about those benefits through um, some real life examples of the positive impact it's had on some of your clients? Absolutely. So I was one of the, uh, one of the first clients that I, I met, uh, we started up Uplift Exercise Physiology uh, almost three years ago now. And it was one of the first young uh, gentlemen that we that we got referred uh, would have been probably 2020, just as COVID was all ramping up. And, and um, yeah, so this, this young gentleman, he, he had uh, ASD, ADD and ADHD. And his NDIS goals were to find employment, to be able to live independently, to improve his personal hygiene, to improve his social networks, to be able to access the community, improve his daily routine, be able to travel independently. Uh, and, and I guess alongside that, um, there were a few barriers when, when we did the initial consultation. Uh, he, he was a nocturnal gamer. So he, you know, his sleep habits were basically the opposite of anyone that's awake during the day. He didn't have social networks. He wasn't engaging in any kind of other therapy at no no physio or no ot he did sort of get proposed those things but he wasn't able to make any progress with them he had low self-confidence he didn't know where to start with his exercises uh he had and as a result of not exercising his strength levels were down uh you know he, his personal grooming was low and even his dietary habits he just he, he was only eating when he really needed to eat so he was not doing too well at that point in time uh, and so we sort of when I sort of went over to his house and met with he, him and his family and we talked about his goals and we, we put our heads together to work out a plan. And we begun because of COVID, we begun with some online sessions. Uh, so I, dro- I dropped some equipment over to his home and we did some online uh, sessions just to build his confidence in me to start with and build his confidence with his exercises. Uh, and once once some of those restrictions lifted, and he found a great support worker. We started to do some sessions together in the gym. Um, and then that they were originally weekly to build the confidence up. And then we re- were able to reduce it back down to fortnightly. And he was able to start to attend a few times by himself. Or not, he was with the support worker, so he wasn't able to attend completely independently. Um, and the program was fairly holistic, obviously some strength training, some advice around healthy lifestyle routines, you know, setting alarms in the morning and going to bed at the right time. Um, some very basic dietary advice is probably an important thing to point out is exercise physiologists are allowed to provide some comments around, you know, how, how to lose weight or how to gain weight or gain. Here's the goal was actually to gain some muscle mass. So it was how to, how to increase his calorie intake. Um, but to go more specific, you'd be looking at a referral to a dietitian uh, outside of that. Uh, and we, we provided him with just some basic uh, personal hygiene advice as well, you know, how, how to kind of come to the gym and be prepared, whether, whether that be just from something like wearing, sim- simple like just a, a honest conversation about wearing some deodorant to the gym or, or things like that. Yeah. Um, and as an outcome of this holistic program, uh, he started to gain strength through his muscles. He 
started to take pride in his appearance. So he'd come to the gym and he'd be shaved and his hair would be done. And yeah, he, you know, he, and, and as a result of that, his self-confidence increased. Yeah. He improved his sleeping routine. Um, he was able to attend routine as small as that is just having that regular exercise physiology appointment and being able to attend that um, allowed him to start to learn how to, uh, how to attend things within the community. Uh, we linked him up with employment services. He commenced his cert three and four in fitness. Uh, he was able to get, uh, unfortunately COVID shut this down, but he was going to go to a conference with his support worker in Melbourne um, and he and he's getting regular socialization through the gym. So obviously that was a big thing for us was to uh, to try and promote that social and economic participation, which which he's on the way to do now, having mm. got all close to getting that certificate three and four in fitness under his belt. And then he's looking to move into em employment and you think about where he started when he was um, he was at home, socially isolated and you know low, low on confidence and um and inactive as well so that's i guess that's a real life example of how exercise physiology has helped that young gentleman mm. what a beautiful story um and i you know i love the way that you talk about it. it's a very holistic um approach and you know to hear um hear that journey um and to hear it referenced back to uh the goals of his plan i think mm. um is, is really wonderful um to hear do you have another um a real life story that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, uh, probably probably a little bit more of a straightforward one, but um, it probably just goes to show you some of the scope of of what an exercise physiologist can do, and and it is quite wide, and especially within in the NDIS, it's quite wide. Um, that's obviously an example of someone with ASD, but a couple of the other types of people that we work with regularly would be people with Parkinson's disease, mm -hmm. people with multiple sclerosis, people with uh, psychosocial disabilities and uh, mental ill health. Uh, so there's, there's a very wide variety, intellectual disabilities as well. Um, just a pretty straightforward one, I guess. Uh, um, one of the, another gentleman who we've been working with for quite a while, he would be roughly a 50 year old uh, male and he's had multiple sclerosis uh, for quite a long time. And and I guess his, his disease was progressing quite slowly um but we we went in there to look to try and strengthen especially with his goals was just look to try and strengthen up his lower limbs so that he could just stay independent at home a little bit better so we provided him with some uh tips and exercises so that he could climb stairs better at his home so that he can get out of, in and out of bed a little bit easier so that he can get up and down off the couch a little bit easier so that he can continue to drive and, and access the community uh, when he'd like to. And then also he happened to have a pool at his home. So we provided him with a set of exercises that he could do in the pool to try and manage his condition. That for him is really important because the cold water um, for him with the MS allows him to uh, pretty much go for a few hours with reduced oh. symptoms. Uh, so that was that was probably just an example of how uh, exercise physiology can be beneficial for people with um, more of those neurological or physical disabilities as well. Yeah, and um, th th it's wonderful to hear and um, and just to hear how um, empowered both of them um, must have been as they've gone through mm -hmm. um, the, those sessions uh, with you. So. Um, Exercise physiology, I think you said, is is medicine, um, which I loved. And uh, if it sounds like something um, that would really benefit me as an NDIS participant or benefit someone that I'm caring for that has an NDIS plan, um, how do I use my NDIS funding to access exercise physiology? Yeah, so basically with exercise physiology, there's a couple categories that uh, that we can claim from uh, as exercise physiologists. So you've got improved health and well-being uh, in, in the plan, which is also capacity building health and well-being. Um, and the, the other one that you can claim from would be improved daily living or CB daily activity. So it's a little bit confusing that they've got some different names in there, but I'm sure that we can write those down and put them, put them in at the end of the uh, presentation as well. Um, and I guess how to go about it would be 
would be to uh, speak to people who can link you up with those services. So we get a lot of the referrals from support coordinators. We do get some people who are happy to do their own research and reach out, out to us directly. So they're self-referred participants. Um, I'm sure, yeah, from, from time to time, other uh, allied health providers, whether it be an OT or a physio, can can refer on. And I'm not too, I'm not too sure. We, we don't get too many referrals from plan managers, but I'm not too sure, Nairi, if that's something that you guys would be able to direct your participants or not. Uh, maybe, maybe not. I'll leave that one to you guys. But, um, yeah, very... very various different ways that you can um, find an exercise physiologist um, and, and utilize the funding. Does that, does that sort of answer the question around that? Yeah. Um, yeah, it does. And um, actually, Jason, we've just got a, a question in the chat, which I, I'd love to um, just ask you before we um, circle back. Uh, what's the difference please between EP and physio? Yeah. So exercise it's a great physiology question. and physio. It's a great question, and I guess, um, in my opinion, there's probably less, maybe less difference than there is more difference. Uh, um, it's within the scope of practice of an exercise physiologist, and it's within the scope of practice of a physio both to prescribe exercise. With a physiotherapist, typically um, and historically, they've probably been it's probably been more the domain of a physio to look after that acute injury, the acute phase of an injury. Um, you know, typically the exercise physiologist, if, if it's a standard sort of course of injury, we would normally get involved after, after about a 12 week period. Um, so once, once, you know, if, if you use a lower back injury or a knee injury, once the diagnosis has been made and that, you know, the injuries calm down a little bit and uh, the physio has been able to may, maybe provide some advice and some basic exercises and some hands on treatment to help that person start to move forward. The exercise physiologists would typically get involved eight to 12 weeks after that initial injury to really start to build that person up from then on. Um, th the thing with the exercise physiologist is the exercise physiologist spends all of their time, 100% of their time prescribing exercises. There isn't any more highly trained profession in Australia than an exercise physiologist when it comes to the prescription of exercise. It's all we do. Um, and we are the specialists of that area, whereas a physio does prescribe exercise, but they'll also do have a different set of tools that they can use um, for, for people in that acute phase, whether that's diagnostic or whether it's hands on um, or other, other forms of manual therapy. Um, so I'd, I'd say an exercise physiologist is, is, is the most specialized when it comes to exercise prescription, especially when it when it is someone whose injury, disability, illness, condition has been going on longer than a couple months as well. Because that's the that's that's all of the people that we see um, are those longer term type of injuries or disabilities. Yeah. Um, I, I think it is probably important to note as well, there is a bit of a difference in the price guide as well, which is really important for all participants and, and obviously plan managers to know. Uh, the last time I checked, I think physio price guide's about 193 per hour. And then the exercise physiology under the price guide's one, um, 166.99. So it's probably close to a $30 difference there. Um, so I guess being a little bit facetious, if you did want someone to provide you an exercise program, an exercise physiologist of the most highly trained in that area, you could possibly get some better value through an exercise physiologist than a physio in that regard. Yeah. On the flip side, our company personally, for example, assistive technology AT reports, we, we don't do any of that kind of stuff. So I would be referring on to a physio when it comes to that or an OT when it comes to that kind of thing. But I know there are EPs out there that do that as well. Okay. Um, another uh, question on the chat, um, Jason, um, and we spoke about this earlier this morning that there, you know, th th this is great to really clarify for people what um, exercise physiology is in reference to yeah. the other um, options, because we've got another question uh, on the chat around um, the, the very specific differences between exercise physiology and a personal trainer. Yeah. Yeah, another great question. I guess the biggest difference, and we probably kind of skipped this a little bit, but essentially um, 
it, it probably comes back to the question of what is an exercise physiologist. And one of the key parts of what is an exercise physiologist is that we're an allied health profession. Um, so our level of qualifications is equal to that of a physiotherapist or an occupational therapist. Whereas for the personal trainer, their level of qualifications is that certificate three, certificate four, or maybe diploma in fitness. Uh, so I don't, you can't quote me on this, but typically those sort of courses might take three, six, maximum 12 months to, to get accredited. Whereas for the exercise physiologist, it's that tertiary qualification, the full university degree. So for example, everyone in our team at Uplift Exercise, everyone's got a, a bachelor's degree. And they've also got a master's degree. So we've all done at least four years of university level study to be able to, uh, to, be able to get our accreditations in addition to that ongoing professional development. And that's the key difference is that exercise physiologists are trained to work with people with injuries, uh, illnesses, disabilities, and different medical conditions, whereas personal trainers they can probably do some extra courses, but they're typically trained to work with people who are um, who are fit and healthy. Um, in saying that, I think there is a great spot where people with a disability who are high functioning can definitely benefit from a personal trainer as well. Okay, thank you. Um, if if any of you at home have got uh, any other questions, we've got a, still got a few minutes left um, in our uh, chat. So pop them there um, and we'll definitely uh, take a look at them before we um, hang up today. Um, Jason, I know that um, Uplift, uh, you're primarily located, uh, I believe, in the Hunter sort of Newcastle mm. um, region. Is yep. that right? Yep. So how, how do I use your services um, if I don't if I don't live there, if I live uh, you know somewhere else? Yeah, yeah, good question. So uh, our, our company chooses to provide a variety of different services. So um, we actually just got a referral from a gentleman up in Queensland who are going to help uh, help he's, he's out in rural Queensland. So I think his closest uh, health professional is 45 minutes from his house. Uh, so he's going to jump on and do some online sessions with us. Uh, he's just started up last week. So that's some online or telehealth sessions we can do. Uh, the other options, we do have a little clinic in Mayfield that we've just started up. So people can come and visit us in our clinic. Otherwise, we're fully mobile as well throughout Newcastle, uh, Lower Hunter, um, up towards Singleton, down towards the Central Coast and up towards Port Stephens. So there's a few different options there. Um, and the other thing it's important to mention is if if the person isn't the right fit for us to help them then uh, we can point them in the right direction of people who might be most appropriate whether that be in Brisbane or Sydney or Melbourne or, or even WA so um, or, or the rest of Australia I should say um, so yeah I guess that they're the options that we can provide and, and I guess with the with the mobile work that that's what I was talking about before is it could be a local hydrotherapy centre or, or a home visit or a local gym. Um, a, a pro, I think it probably is important to mention there as well is that um, the person would just need to have their own gym membership if they do want to go in the gym as well. I don't believe that NDIS supports that. I haven't had too many experiences where the NDIS has paid for gym memberships. So typically we would just, we'll just uh, go in the gym if someone has their own membership. Um, well, we, we can certainly uh, discuss that in the, the commentary box um, and pop that there um, for, for anyone, in, uh, anyone who's watching um, around that, around uh, gym payment um, or support from your NDIS mm -hmm. um, plan. And I, I think it's really important um, what you mentioned there, Jason, um, is the significant networking um, that mm. Uplift have and, um, you know, the exceptional reputation that um, Uplift have uh, in the industry. So that, yeah, m perhaps I won't be able to utilise your services, but I can certainly come to Uplift and you can point me in yep. the direction of some yeah. of some referrals, which I think is, is um, fantastic. I think, yeah, I think that's a good point to mention, Nairi. I, I think it was that, and we had a chat about this not too long ago, but basically that, that was one of the motivations for me to come in and have a chat today. You know, I, our, our, our team, our team's pretty busy, probably like most other allied health teams at this point in time, um, just with the invite, the COVID environment and everything like that. Um, you know, I, we, yeah, 
like we don't get me wrong we're happy to accept any referrals but we don't necessarily need them right now but what we do want to make sure is that um people uh the word of exercise physiology is getting out there and if we can't help people then um we can we can refer on to the next next best or or the or even the best if they're if there's someone that specializes or specializes in a certain geography um that we don't cover so um yeah more than happy more than happy to uh put some recommendations forward if anyone just needed some local more local service area outside what we can do oh terrific um that's fantastic um jason we might be uh we might have to get you on for part two and and uh, you can show us a few uh exercises that we can do in the comfort of our home and what an online uh session would potentially look like are you up yeah. for that oh never say never <laughs> <laughs> uh, um uh, jason i um i want to give a big shout out to you for joining us this morning and for giving us uh you know great information about exercise physiology uh what are its benefits and how you can use ndis funding um to access it actually we've got a couple of minutes jason i've just got a uh, question jump into the yeah. chat box um yeah. The question is, do clients typically engage long-term or for intervention and shorter periods? Yeah, great question. Uh, so that is dependent on the client first and foremost. Um, obviously a secondary factor is, is the funding that they have available because some people come to us and they've got five hours of funding and some people come to us and they've got 50 hours of funding. So it's completely different and it's completely structured. I guess as a guide for me, I would love and this sounds pretty funny, but I'd love to put myself out of a job. I would love <laughs> for everyone that we have to be able to self-manage their exercises and be confident to do that without us. So if that's the case, if someone can get self-management really quickly, a couple of hours of work, then they probably wouldn't need to engage with us long-term. But we know, especially um, with the type of people that we work with, whether it be um, aged care or injured workers or NDIS, uh, some participants, they do need that more regular um, assistance uh, and they might need it not just with the exercise physiologist, but maybe with the support worker present or a family member present or another allied health uh, or a allied health assistant present. So it's, it's really individual uh, and it depends on what that, that individual participant needs. Okay, fantastic. Um, Jason, if I've got questions um, that I would like to, um, you know, chat to you further about or I want to get in contact with uh, Uplift or someone in the team at Up Uplift, what's the best way uh, to get uh, in touch with you or your team? Yeah, um, we're not, I'll, I'm, I'm a bit slack on the social media, but um, our website's typically up to date. So it's the best way to go. Uh, my phone number is 0407-427-429 and our website is upliftexercise.com.au. Uh, so there's a bunch more information on there. And the other thing is that's probably the best spot to go. If there was anyone that um, that did want to refer, there's a little referral tab up the top right-hand corner and then you just click on NDIS referrals and it guides you, guides you through and then that comes straight through to us and we can action it from there. Fantastic. And um, we'll pop your co uh, contact details in the web page um, on our Facebook page um, awesome. as well. Um, so again, thank you so much for joining us, Jason. Uh, just a quick reminder to those of you on the call, we do have a Facebook Live uh, every Tuesday night at 7.30. It's a 10-minute Ask Us Anything session. So we'd love to see you there and answer any questions that you might have NDIS related. Um, Jason, hopefully we'll see you in a little while when you you take us through some online um, exercise physiology. Um, but again, thank you so much uh, for joining us. And thank you to everyone at home who has joined us today. I hope you're very useful. Um, I know I certainly did. Um, have a wonderful rest of the week. Uh, stay safe and well. And bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Jason.